Shalom Bible readers and salvation seekers. We come to another study, a very sh a reasonably short one, titled, Are You Listening to the Right Voice? God has spoken to a few people in the Bible and received different responses, from Adam, Cain, Noah, Abraham being amongst the first. When they heard from him directly, there was no ambiguity in what he required of them nor were they in doubt when they departed from that requirement. The system was clear as he told Cain, Genesis chapter 4 verse 7, he said, God, if thou do well, shall thou not be accepted, and if thou do not well, sin lies at the door. <clears throat> Obedience to his way brought his blessings and great reward as we read about Abraham, the father of the fathers of the Bible. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. The next father could be said to be Moses. I am unsure whether God took a visible form so that persons like Adam could see him in the garden. We are told he took such a form when once appeared to Abraham in Genesis chapters 18 verses 1 to 2. When Moses met him, we are told in Exodus chapter 3 verse 6, it says, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. Later, Exodus chapter 33, 20 tells us, and he said, God again speaking, thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. However, God chose Moses to be his interface with Israel, to lead them out of Egypt. God spoke to Moses, and Moses spoke to the people. When God came to speak to the people directly, they got afraid and asked that Moses continue to be God's spokesperson. Exodus chapter 19, verse 11. God speaking, and be ready against the third day, for the third day <clears throat> Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon, upon Mount Sinai. However, we read that the people got afraid in Exodus chapter 20, 19. It says, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. <clears throat> we subsequently read it was actually, it was the opposite. When God stopped speaking to them directly, they were on the way to their death. They were afraid of God and his voice, but not of Moses. Hence, the times they wanted to depart further from God by departing from Moses, as in the examples of Numbers chapter 12, verse 2, and 16, verse 3. In fact, when both Moses and God were absent, they returned to worshiping an Egyptian God, so that if it was not for Moses' plea to God, he would have killed them. Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 to 2 and 10 to 12. <clears throat> that became the general pattern in the Old Testament. When the people and subsequent kings hearkened to God's voice and kept his way, they lived. When they departed, they died. In the Bible, it was a shepherd who guided the sheep by his voice. John chapters 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This was a practice instituted by God when he guided them out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 reads, And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Verse 20, 
Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. He, God, has the same system for us, his sheep, today. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church, church in congregation, in the wilderness, with the angel which spoke to him in Mount Sinai, or at Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. That is the fulfillment of a promise by God in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, where he told Moses and the congregation, the church of Israel, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, he's speaking to Moses, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken, listen, Unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And then we read in the New Testament, John chapter 1, verse 25, they found this prophesied person, Philip finds Nathaniel and says unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and prophets did write, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Today, people and the church, the congregations, mostly following the Bible, are not being guided by the shepherd, but a dog. Though some dogs are trainable to properly guide the sheep, many are not. Just like the creatures in dog collars and purple colours today. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 speaks of such and their master. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Note works, actions. They and those who follow them come under the warnings of Jude chapter 18, verses 18 to 20, as I read up above. They raise themselves up as prophets, not, for, is not from Israel's brethren, but Gentile Christians, who they are not promoters of keeping God's laws as was Moses. They create their own motivation speeches, interpretations of God's word, and it is from him or the Holy Spirit in God for his son's name. Plainly, they speak in the name of other gods as a host of heaven, etc. Because what they're promoting is transgression of God's laws and foreign practices of other gods like the sun god. I laugh when I hear those who clearly violate Leviticus 23 by the cause appointed times claim they are servants of God or his son, that they hear from them or the Holy Spirit. When the Bible says in Acts chapter 5 verse 32, gives a criteria for those who hear from God. It says, and we are his witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. That's the criteria. And to obey means keeping all of God's laws, including Leviticus 23. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, part of it. The sword of the spirit 
which is the word of God. So these prophets are not speaking clearly the word of God, rather than their own interpretations, then they have not given the spirit of God, Holy Spirit. They clearly are living in the past, such as what kings and the nation of Israel did. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 says something it says about such people. Women in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that thou worketh in the children of disobedience. They are the ones who are not following the Holy Spirit, but are not the Spirit. Neither Peter nor Judas knew when Satan entered in entered them in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, with Peter, when he said, Get the army of Satan, and Luke chapter 22, verse 3, when Satan entered Judas and he went and betrayed Yeshua. We know the voice of God or his son has neither ever said God's commandments were not to be kept in their entirety. Yet Christians today follow voices and preachers telling them grace is sufficient for them. When Yeshua said to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, my grace is sufficient for thee, notice the thee, he was saying it to a seventh day Sabbath keeper and God's law keeper, which is what Paul was, inclusive of the annual Leviticus 23 holy days. We read this in Acts chapter 18, verse 21, where Paul says he must go up to keep the feast. Thus, Paul never took my grace as sufficient for thee, as he did not, um, thus, Paul never took it as he did not have to keep God's laws. In other words, he knew that grace meant he still had to keep God's laws. That Yeshua had nailed them to a cross, as some people preach today, fulfill them, or other voices spoken today against keeping God's laws and commandments. This is the same Paul that people should read, that said in Galatians 2, 17, for example, but if, speaking to readers of the Bible, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid, absolutely not. Romans chapter 6, verse 15. What well, then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, the law, but under grace? God forbid. Absolutely not. And a not clear saying of Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 19 is circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God. An example of three clear messages of Paul indicating. That the commands of God must be kept. Whether you want to follow Christ, whether you think you're under grace, or other reasons, or other reasons. Yeshua, the voice of God, is the voice we should follow. It is the same voice as in the Old Testament, as He is the Word of God made flesh. Read this in John chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 14. To hear His voice, you first have to be in the right sheep pen where the porter opens that door on the right day when he comes as they are listed in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24, the day of trumpets, which is when we said Yeshua will return. John chapter 10, verse 3. To him the porter opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. But he's only going to depend of the sheep where the sheep are of people who obey his father's commandments. John chapter 10, verse 5. And a strange stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Telling them, for example, that God's laws not be kept. These sheep are not deceived by dogs barking God's law has been nailed to the cross, fulfilled as those 
of Matthew 7, 21, 22 to verse 23, which I read below. They are well aware of John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my father as one, therefore they preach the same message. And they lead to the same place by the same method, obedience to God's law. The devil leads to hell as he caused Adam and Eve to be cast out of God's garden through their disobedience. Psalms chapter 40, verses 7 to 8. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yea, the law is in my heart. And Yeshua is that person prophesied. Jeremiah chapter 13, 1 verse 7 of 3, Hebrews 8, 10 and 10 verse 16 tells us we too are similarly to have God's law in our hearts. That's where the new covenant was made to Israel. The volume of his book that stops our steps from sliding. Psalms chapter 37 verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Yet most Christian preachers preach the keeping of God's law is not necessary. Yeshua confirmed he had not come to destroy nor change the law. In fact, he came to magnify it, show how it is to be kept, shine a light on it and make it clear through clarification and examples. Some verses that speak of Yeshua and the law in the same way. Firstly, it says in Isaiah chapter 30, 42, verse 21, Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So Yeshua was the living law, the word of God. Scripture speaks of their attributes in the same way. Truth, and in John chapter 40, verse 6, speaking about Yeshua, Psalm chapter 119, verse 142, speaking about the law. Holy, Acts chapter 4, verse 27, Romans chapter 7, verse 12. I will leave out the, the, um, the references, because you can see the references on the screen. But it speaks of them similarly, both of them similarly, being perfect, righteous, light, just. They abide, and we are to abide in them forever. They should be in our hearts, and they give freedom, no condemnation, to them that are in Christ. And I'll tell you what it means to be in Christ. Being in Christ is to keep his false commandments, not just because you claim you are in Christ. As I say, they give freedom, no condemnation, and liberty. From chapter 8, verse 1, and change to 2, verse 2, verse 12. Rejecting the law is rejecting Yeshua, because the, Yeshua is the word of God, and the word of God is the law of God, and vice versa. First John chapter 3 verse 4 defines sin as transgression of God's law. Same as going against Yeshua. It reads, whosoever committed sin or commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is transgression, transgression of the law. Therefore, how can any Christian professing to follow Christ think they are no longer under the law? under Yeshua's directive, they were in the same. That they are now free to commit the sin against God and man. Psalms 19 verse 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them 
there is great reward. A scripture reference is the Psalm 119, verse 18, 19, and verses 97 to 8, and so on. Psalm 89, verse 34, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. That is God speaking. The law does not change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thus, sheep who are in the wrong pens on the wrong days, listening to dogs, speaking their own words, advocating God's law has been replaced by grace, etc., will be of Matthew 7 21 to 23, as I mentioned above. And that and it reads, But everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall I enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that meets the criteria of doing the will of my Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Or shall I say what they thought were wonderful works? And then Yeshua will say, verse 23, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity, no lawlessness, you broke the law. And verse 24, therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And I draw your attention to the word never. It means never. Not that you were first on the right road and then slipped or backslidden. It means all the times you were going to the wrong church pen on the wrong days and so forth, you were actually committing iniquity. Possibly worshipping um, the wrong gods or some, such as the host of heaven, some of them. The voice of God by Moses in the Old Testament was in Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. It says, And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. It's the same voice speaking the same way of life through Yeshua. The only difference is he is the better sacrifice for our repented sins than the animal sacrifices offered by Aaron. We read this in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 to 25. As in the beginning of Israel's journey in the wilderness, God had prepared a destination of a promised land and gave them an angel and way of life to follow it. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. He has done the same for all generations, inclusive of ours. John chapter 14, verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And Matthew 19, verse 17. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Saints are people full of God. Here are they that keep the commands of God and the faith of Yeshua. Not one or the other, but both. And Revelation 22, verse 14, the, almost at the end of the our Bible manual, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Yeshua said some things hard to follow by those rooted in traditions of their religious <clears throat> upbringing, so that when they heard the truth, they walked away from it. Luckily for Paul, God had a mission for him, but it took blinding him to make him see. Is it not ironic that those who turn away from the truth are of John chapter 6, verse 66, the mark of the devil, the says the beast. And that reads, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. 
Isaiah chapter 51, verse 7. Hearken unto me, you that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear you not the reproach of men, neither be you afraid of their violence. We should not make the same mistake as Israel in some parts of its history when it departed from God's guidance and way. Psalm chapter 95, verse 7. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, hearken not, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they will, that they should not enter into my rest. A clear separation, identification, by the voice of God and his Holy Spirit is that neither would teach a departure from his law. Neither did Paul, who Christians, what some who they think are Paul and some Gentiles today, use as their source of such disobedience. Most people believe Paul, misunderstand, mis, they misunderstand Paul's writings and think that's superior to what God commanded. <clears throat> He, Paul, said in Romans chapter 15, verse 18, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Obedient to what? God's law. So I can only urge you to seek out and listen to the spirit of truth so we can worship in spirit and truth. John chapter 4 verse 23. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John 16 verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So if you're relying on Yeshua to guide you into lies, not his father's laws, it is not Yeshua. It is a deceitful, deceiving spirit of Satan. First John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God is not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. For the preachers against keeping God's law. Psalm 119, verse 142. For righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is truth. So to worship in spirit and truth, we have to keep God's law. Psalm 119, verse 105, my last verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I hope you have either been enlightened or reminded of the necessity to keep God's law to enter into his promised eternal land. Shalom.